Hello and welcome to Campus Field on the beautiful campus of Sacred Heart. It's a rainy day in Southern Connecticut as the visiting cadets of Virginia Military Institute have made the long journey north. The home pioneers are looking to pick up their first win of the season and more importantly, their first win in MAC play. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato, thank you for joining us. And Joe, this Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference looks very different than it had just one year ago. Yeah, a few new members, including Sacred Heart, and you mentioned it at the top, starting the season off 0-7 and 0-2 in MAC play, but the uh, MAC is still wide open. The leader Manhattan is only 2-0, so plenty to play for here to Sacred Heart and get their season started the right way. And now we will hear from the third member of our team, Molly Jacob, to tell us about what makes today's game so special. Molly? Thank you, Evan. Today is a very special day, and even though it is cold and windy and rainy, we are excited to honor military and a first responders appreciation day. The Sacred Heart men's lacrosse team was able to partner with Paws of War, an organization that finds and places dogs with military veterans that are going through the living effects of war. And head coach John Bossy says that this is a day he wishes he could cherish every single day. And that is why this men's lacrosse team wears the red, white, and blue American flag logo on their helmets for every single game, along with the Punisher logo in honor of Chris Kyle. We're looking forward to today's game, and John Bossy says that he's looking forward to taking care of his two-legged friends along with his four-legged friends. Back to you guys. Thank you, Molly. Alongside Joe Fortunato, I'm Evan Cormier, and we'll be right back for the opening face-off from Sacred Heart. Dear college sports, There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. Hello and welcome back. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato. And we are almost ready to get underway from Campus Field. As we mentioned before, the Pioneers still looking for their first win. But that's not to say they haven't been in it. They haven't lost by more than three goals since February 26th. You know, they started out rocky, but since then they've been battling. Yeah, they found their way a little bit as the season kind of progressed, and we talked about it at the top. Even though they're 0-2 in conference and 0-7 on the season so far, really the conference schedule is just getting started. Plenty of opportunities here for Sacred Heart to uh, get themselves going. As that opening faceoff is won, and the Pioneers are on the tack carrying it up, is John Murray the midfielder from Summit, New Jersey. Another area of emphasis for Sacred Heart, winning at the faceoff, so good start to the day. And Evan and I were just lamenting the fact that we never get nice March weather for uh, Sacred Heart lacrosse games. It is currently uh, pretty slick out there, so with the heavy rain, we should see an interesting dynamic. As the first shot is saved by VMI goaltender Adam Norris. Adam Norris is a goalie freshman out of Yorktown, New York. The freshman has started all eight games this year. He's got a record of four wins, four losses. And this will be the interesting part of the game as it continues to downpour. The clears are going to be very difficult, slick turf. Sometimes it's tough to get that ball out of the stick when it's wet like that. Handled right now at the top by Simon Moore. Simon Moore, the sophomore out of Annapolis, Maryland. He's listed at six foot 190. He's one of a slew of players coming out of Annapolis on this VMI starting lineup. As Joe mentioned, it is currently downpouring. We've had rain, hail, almost some snow. We've had everything but sunlight so far. Running the gambit. As we get a couple dodge attempts shut down. This is Moore again. Trying to get an off angle, has to give it off. In tight now. That's the tricky Rusteruki. That one's thrown away, and the Pioneers will get a defensive zone turnover. Shot clock. 
Luke Rastruki, the attacking sophomore out of Peachtree, Georgia, has got 19 goals, 16 assists, and 35 points through the first eight. He leads the team in almost every statistical category. Yeah, and that was really good work by the Pioneers defense. They, they've done a really good job staying patient, uh, doing their sliding help, and getting a fast break right here. As this is Carson Spooner, the attacking senior out of California, handling it in midfield. Dumps it off behind the cage. He's trying to find number 51, Jake Ward, the sophomore to Highland Ranch, Colorado. Another turnover. As you mentioned, the conditions might be playing into the difficulty as we get an offensive zone turnover forced by Jake Ward. Now we're three on two. Elects to rip the shot. Another save made by the excellent Norris. Yeah, and I think this is, at least in the beginning, what you're going to see is the teams kind of feel out these conditions a little bit. Sacred Heart probably not that comfortable with a, a very quick run-and-gun game in this kind of weather, but... Both of these teams assist on about half of their goals. The Pioneers are being outscored so far this season by a, a meager 40 goals. They've scored 56, had 96 hung on them. And that's the largest margin in the MAC conference. As we got a dodge from behind the cage and he scores early. That's Luke Rastruki, the attacking sophomore. That's his 20th goal on the young season. Well, you just talked about him and really good work there. Sacred Heart, we were talking about it at the top. Done a pretty good job keeping their heels in and not letting uh, VMI get into the middle. So he decided to do it himself. A little isolation play curled around the net and just sniped that, sniped it home. Rastruki has now scored in every game this season. As you see him parked behind the cage, rolls and just buries it top right. That's a tough angle. Very precise shot from Rastruki. He's now scored in every game. He had six goals versus Hampton, and he's got two hat tricks on the season as the Pioneers win another faceoff and turn it into points. A quick response from the Pioneers, and we're knotted up at one. Nicky Cassano. Not only does he win the faceoff, but takes it himself and puts it right through the wickets. That's we'll what the see doctor this ordered. Fast right. break. Wins the faceoff, scoops it, takes it himself through four defenders and goes five hole on the goaltender. We're knotted up at one. Just three and a half minutes into it. It's a way to turn the momentum back in your favor. And encouraging here if you're Sacred Heart. They've won both faceoffs so far. I believe both have been won by Nicky Cassano, the sophomore out of Southampton. He was a little early to the punch that time. Curse of the commentator, first face <laughs> violation. VMI will be awarded the possession. I noticed the defense is playing pretty high today. Do you think that has to do with the offensive firepower or the conditions? I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, John Bosti kind of tweaked his defense a little bit here and, and he doesn't want those he doesn't want the slides to come through the middle he wants to keep the guys at bay uh, the opposing team as far away from the net as they can far away from the danger areas you'll see Sacred Heart do a really good job with active sticks knocking down passes that try to cut the crease and uh, that's why that little isolation play that happened probably something John Bosti's not upset with even though VMI scored on it those are low percentage shots yeah it's a tough angle as we get another one from the slot goes over the net and that's how you break that type of zone defense. You get enough speed down the far alley and you can get your hands free. Gives it off. That's where the last goal was scored. And an errant pass sends it towards midfield. Now scrambling for it. Over and back and Sacred Heart will uh, be the recipient of the turnover. Pioneers are on the attack with a fresh shot clock. This is Jake Ward. And that is that defense that they want. They want to close close the gaps. VMI tried to throw a pass through the middle and just nobody was home. So very good work by the Pioneers so far early. The attacking junior, Jake Garb, trying to get a, a dodge and roll. Forced to give it off. And now the Pioneers are close to midfield. Attacking is Carson Spooner. Spooner is the senior out of California. That was Sal Micchio trying to get off. A shot. He's tied for the most goals on the team with 11 so far, but a good cadet defense. One of the uh, leading returnees from last year, Sal Micchio. Good to see him getting involved. We've talked a lot about trying to be a little bit more assertive in the beginning of games, and you saw that there. 
That's Spooner trying to rip a shot. Spooner's very active on offense as well. He's got 10 goals, 3 assists, 13 points in the 7 appearances he has made. Sacred Heart very aggressive here. They're taking any shot they can once they get their hands free. That was Morseki who gives it off in tight. Save made. Morris has been great early. And it looks like if VMI can get this clear off, they'll be back on the attack. Morris definitely saving VMI's bacon. Could easily be 3-1 Sacred Heart right now. Yeah, I've been extremely impressed with the freshman. He's averaging about 13 goals against. Is that was very good recovery defense by the Sacred Heart Pioneers there. VMI had a break down low. Setting something up are the cadets. As I was saying before, Adam Norris, the freshman, has made 104 saves. He started all eight of his first career games. This is a dodge from really high, forced to give it off. Again, I know it's early, but the Pioneers are definitely making it difficult, trying to protect Pazienza in the crease. We get a roll from behind. Yeah, this is what Sacred Heart wants. They want the ball out here. Not going to do a lot of damage from there. Trying to get past the defense. Nothing doing once again. Ten seconds on the shot clock. This is Rastruki. Likes to give it up top now. Five seconds to shoot. Dodge shot. Save made by Pazienza. Give Jack Ramsey a lot of credit on that defensive possession for Sacred Heart. He did a fantastic job shutting off X, making sure that VMI couldn't get any of those passes through. Out running the defense is Mitty, John Murray. He likes to carry it coast to coast, takes a shot, goes tumbling, and now the Pioneers are outnumbered, four on three. VMI trying to get something going in tight. Pioneers able to recover. Yeah, probably not the shot you want to see if you're John Bosti. You have a pretty much full shot clock. Goalie's looking right at you, and you put it right in his stick. That one's ripped from the slot. Goes over the net. Pazienza wins the race. Probably see Sacred Heart be a little more patient here. No need to force it, especially coming off a full defensive set. Or turn the ball over. <laughs> that was long stick defenseman Jake Candeline. And the cadets are on the attack. They've advanced past midfield, now trying to set something up, getting the right personnel. This is Rastruki checking back in. AJ Stamos handling it. Gives it off to Jordan. Jordan to Rastruki. Again, the Pioneers playing a, a tight zone. Rastruki wanted the shot, gives it off to Stamos. Good ball movement. Back to Rastruki. And you can see it does require your defenders to really keep their feet moving. You have to keep switching on the ball. So far for Sacred Heart, it's working. And As normally he... it does not allow that, but very good cluster defense there by the Pioneers. The Pioneers had their back turned, and that was the cutting Simon Moore, I believe, who got the shot off. Junior Jake Condolendo for Sacred Heart. 88, number uh, 88. Yes, He's sir. a very big body turn around and get that back in. Does Pine. look like the rain has let up a little bit. This is much of what we've seen this morning. It goes from downpouring to occasionally hail to just cold and miserable. Keeping us on our toes as the Pioneers try to get a long dodge. That's Johnny Morgan. Johnny Morgan gives it off to Carson Reeder, another save made by Norris. And fantastic work there by the Pioneers, making those clears very difficult. Caden Brodnax with the hit to dislodge the ball. Tough angle, maybe not a great shot with a full shot clock. The Pioneers able to save the possession. It's Caden Brodnax now calling for it at the top, the has short stick midi. Has to be said for how patient Sacred Heart has been on defense, it's been the exact opposite on offense. Definitely anxious to get a shot off as the rain picks back up. Yeah, shouldn't have said anything about yeah coming left to right. Sal Micchio oh, trying to get involved. Pass. Good pass. Bounce shot. Buried. Buries it. And the Pioneers are in the lead. 
Johnny Morgan with the finish, but the real star of that goal was that pass by Sal Micchio. We'll see on this replay. Just a little quick flick of the wrist. Pulls the defender to him and the give and go. Oh, that was that nasty. Was a beautiful pass. That was nasty in the and goaltender. He's doing that in the pouring rain. Goaltender Adam Norris was beat low. Hard for a goalie to stop something like that, but that's exactly what John Bosti wants to see Sal Micchio doing. You don't have to be assertive by taking shots. You don't have to score a ton of goals. Get to the soft area of the field. Make that quick little pass. Beat your man. Really good work. Sure, head coach John Bossy is, score is happy to get some secondary scoring. That's uh, Johnny Morgan's seventh goal on the year. He's now in double-digit points, and we get another face-off win. Quick turnover. I was going to say he should also be happy with the, uh, the three face-off wins so far. But that's not a good turnover, especially when you kind of had a little bit of momentum going your way. They might force a turnover. They do. And now they're outnumbering the cadets. This is... Gar buries it. That was number 35, Jake Garb, the attacking junior, who's able to force the turnover and split through the middle of the defense and put the Pioneers up too early. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Sacred Heart wins the faceoff, turns the ball over, and then they make the VMI clear difficult. They force a turnover, and he just takes it himself. Pioneer offense has wasted no time. They're taking shots early in the count as Jake Garb, about six inches away from Adam Norris, gets to pick his spot, goes high. Really good work there by the Pioneers. It is a staple of their game to really ride the clear and make it as difficult as possible for the opposition. Those 50-50 hustle plays that you just saw there, they're important. They led to a goal. And Sacred Heart up 3-1, and they will win another faceoff. Nikki Cassano stays hot. Winning yet another faceoff. Now the Pioneers back on attack. This is short stick midfielder John Murray. And if you're a Pioneers fan who's joined us all year, you see the uh, benefits of winning a faceoff time and time again up by two and holding possession. Pioneers now electing to choose patience for a change of pace. This is at the top, Michael Morsecki. Gets in tight and he scores another one. He just goes stick side high. And the Pioneers are up big. Sacred Heart seeing a lot of success on offense by getting just isolation on the near or far alley and just beating their guys with speed. Just blows by him and then he's got a clear lane to the net and just fires it into the top corner. Pioneers wasting no time at all. Burying back to back to back goals. That is I mean, this, unanswered. this quarter has been so lopsided, I'm a little surprised VMI is not burning a timeout here to try to calm things down a bit. Nikki Cassano's back in the dot, seeing if he can get it done once again. A good effort. Cassano I flips it out. I believe he. Oh no, they're calling it on him, actually. Yeah, he might have been early. The two lone face-off wins for the cadets both come on face-off violations. Very surprised they made that call. I, I thought Cassano was being held, um, but I am a good 50 feet away, so I wasn't sure if that was going to be a uh, there too early or a holding, as they were tangled up for a while. This is Rastruki trying to get something going. Gives it off. He is. The main contributor on offense. He's got the lone goal for the cadets so far and 20 on the season. Likes to hang out behind the net. See Jack Ramsey continuing to uh, defend X there. Giving it off to Jordan Hartley. Hartley's had a lot of time of possession. Hasn't been able to get a shot off, though. And this, you, you're getting a really good look at the way that Sacred Heart wants to play defense. They want to keep you as far away from the net as possible. And when you try to get inside, they just close down. And they Aaron force pass. another turnover. This defense has been something to hang your hat on if you're a Pioneer. Bottle this up and sell it if you're the Pioneers. Both ends of the ball. Pazienza passes it out. Hasn't been asked to make too many saves just because of how stout the defense has been. Yeah, and you're seeing VMI get a little bit trigger happy, I think, with uh, their offensive sets now. And Sacred Heart could have used that. Oh, look at that. There it is again. Forcing the turnover was goal back scorer. Back to back. Jake Garb not taking no for an answer. Sacred Heart's gotten a little fortunate. It's the second time they've uh, forced their media turnover after turning it over themselves. Sal Micchio now patrolling 
midfield. He's going to give it off to Morsecki. To Spooner. Spooner through the defense. Bout shot. And he buries it. Just oh. under the crossbar. The Pioneers are relentless so far. They've scored five goals in the opening 12 minutes and 33 seconds. And the Pioneers beating VMI's defense exactly the way that you want to see it. Just coming down the far alley, just an isolation play, just gets by his guy. Sacred Heart is just faster. And now the timeout that I mentioned before being called by VMI is it's 5-1 Sacred Heart. Almost you know, seeming a, a second too late on the timeout. Call. Evan, you talked about it. The past th four Sacred Heart losses, they lost by two to Manhattan, three to Siena, one by Drexel, and then three at SBU. They've not been out of games, and you can see the flashes here of this really talented squad. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Welcome back to Campus Field as we'll hear from the third member of our team, Molly Jacob. Molly? Thank you, Evan. There are three words that the pioneers live by, and that is courage, grit, and resolve. These words serve as a daily reminder that the team needs to be thinking about what's next. Coach Bossy said that the way they are approaching the process of improvement on a daily basis is not by saying these three words, but by embodying these th three words. And we are seeing that through the game so far. He said, you cannot be afraid to play this game, and that is why they are happy to be a part of the MAAC as a conference is the epitome of grit. Back to you guys. Thank you, Molly. Fear has definitely not been a part of the Pioneers winning formula this afternoon as they're getting their shots off early and often. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're seeing just dominance on both sides of the ball and very nice to see an opposing team have to call a timeout to try to get themselves back into shape here. But a really good opportunity for uh, Sacred Heart you win a face-off, you score another goal, it is an absolute backbreaker when you have a team on their heels like this. The Pioneers are winless on the season, but you wouldn't know it by this first quarter performance. They've buried five off the end of Nicky Cassano, winning many face-offs, one of them even a give-and-go to himself, winning it, scooping it up, and scoring not more than 10 seconds later, as VMI will get a very important face-off win out of the timeout. Yeah, like we said, SHU is battle-tested. They have not lost a lot of games by more than three goals, and especially of late, the past four losses, they've been right in all those games. It's a very high-powered offense for the Cadets, scoring in the teens with about six players, just trying to get something going. It's a credit to the Pioneer defense, really. So that was Simon Moore, who, again, is just unable to beat the defense. I wonder if they're going to make an adjustment out of this timeout. It doesn't look like it. It does look like a little bit more of the same, although that might be a uh, credit to Sacred Heart's defense, just shutting down the middle of the field. Stamos and Hartley Jordan. Jordan finally gets his shot off. He was mentioned before. Bounce shot. He scores and ends the 5-0 run. And you see the reaction from uh, <coughs> Ramsey there where he's just a step behind can't get in front of his man and uh, gets his hands free and puts it in the back of the net. That is what has not been happening on the Pioneers on defense. They've been able to stay with them and ride them back to X. Uh, didn't happen there, and VMI gets the uh, the goal. We're seeing a lot of passes for the Cadets offense. Now electing to go isolation was Hartley Jordan, the senior from Henrico, Virginia, and he scores his 11th on the year. That's good enough for second best on the team. I mean, it's the only thing that's working is we get another face-off violation by Cassano because Sacred Heart just isn't letting anything in the middle of the field go. Now, being patient are the cadets. They'll have just about the rest of the quarter. There's 75 seconds remaining, 70 on the shot clock. Cutting from the top and carrying it all the way in, missing the net, however, was Simon Moore. Yeah, and you see Moore 
Got to step free. He's way out of the zone there, but still lets a shot go because it's, it's been such a rare opportunity for them to get their hands free. This is Moore with it again in the cradle. Trying to put the moves on, gives it up to Hartley. Ben Palacio with some good defense there. Stamos moves it to the X as Rastruki's trying to get something going. Good passes so far. It's been cradle to cradle all over the field. Rastruki rips one. Pazienza sees it all the way in. It's a really good save and really good work by the defense. Not the best shot in the world. Goalie has a chance to see it. Now the Pioneers with 20 seconds to mess around with. Seeing if they can end on a high note. This would be big for momentum. Jake Ward in the X. Puts the brakes on. Gets it in tight. Trying to rip a shot was Garb. And that looks like it'll end the quarter. It will. The horn sounds. The end of the first quarter. Five goals for the Pioneers. Two for the Cadets in an action-packed 15 minutes. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato will be right back from Sacred Heart. Earned, not given. In the NEC, we know where we come from. And realize how hard we work together. We attack every day as a new challenge. We become stronger. We build our character. We put in the work to earn respect. There are no handouts. The word quit is not in our vocabulary. Adversity? Bring it on. Because the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. NEC Hoops, new challenges. Same grit. All earned, nothing given. When you live where we live, when you meet the kind of people we get to meet, share their seasons, their good times, and when they need a helping hand, you pick up pretty quick that every little thing is a little more than it seems. It's my Tuesday morning. It's my helper. It's my livelihood. It's my pleasure. It's at the heart of the community. It's more than food. It's my big why. Welcome back to Campus Field. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato. And we got a very action-packed first quarter from Fairfield. The goal scorers for the Pioneers, Johnny Morgan, Carson Spooner, Mike Morsecki, Jake Garb, and Nikki Cassano. The goal is coming from VMI by players Luke Rastruki and Hartley Jordan. And the Pioneers mostly dominated that first quarter. VMI got something going towards the end. But for the most part, it was all Sacred Heart. Yes, yeah, Sacred Heart scored seven goals in a loss to Manhattan and eight in a loss to Siena. So to put up five in the first 15 minutes is a pretty good sign that things are getting a little better for the Pioneers. The Cadets have the second best margin of goals to goals against. They've scored 97 and only allowed 103. Pioneers are the last in the conference. Pioneers were actually picked to finish eighth in the preseason poll in the mid-Atlantic. Metro Atlantic, excuse me. And plenty of time to do that and more. Conference play really just getting started. That did not make it through the Pioneer defense. Yeah, Sacred Heart is really just absolutely shutting down the middle of the field. It's been a clinic so far. Trying to get the clear is defenseman oh. Jack Carr. Able to get a full field pass. Now in tight over his shoulder. That was Jake Ward you know, picking up his second goal. The hustle play from Garb there is what leads to this goal because this is a turnover all day before he just jumps in to intercept it. And it overshadows a little bit of Ward going behind the back. But that does not happen without Garb jumping in front of his defender and getting that ball into a stick. Because that was a clear turnover by Sacred Heart. Jake Garb, the junior, picks up his fourth assist. And Jake Ward picks up his 13th goal, his second of the day. Pioneers are up four. 
And they picked up right where they left off in the first quarter, scoring very quickly. Just really good hustle plays by the Pioneers so far. And a little bit of a swap there at the uh, faceoff circle. M.P. Thomas, the sophomore out of Rosewell, Georgia, who wins that one for the Pioneers. And just like that, they are back on the attack. This is Garb in the slot. Gives it off to Ward in the X. Now Ward and Garb doing a little bit of rolling. Long dodge attempt shut down. We're seeing a zone from the Pioneers and a little bit of man defense from the Cadets as they get traded off at the top. Now trying to get fancy is Morrissey. Oh, he, he just beat misses his man and just couldn't turn his shoulder enough. That was Moreshi. He's got a goal on the day. That was a great opportunity there. 31 seconds left on the shot clock, so Sacred Heart doesn't have to rush anything. Moreshi's listed as a short stick midfielder, but he's been doing a lot in the offensive zone as Jake Ward tries to get fancy. Gives it off to the big body Morgan O'Reilly. O'Reilly tries to bully his way in, and he gets called for the foul. Not sure I love that call. That seemed like the cross to me. It's a physical game. Restrecki's trying to get his offense going. Restrecki is the leading goal scorer in the Metro Atlantic. You know, and I am a little surprised it, it, with moments like that where Sacred Heart's not fully set back on defense in this transition that VMI isn't pushing the ball a little bit harder. Because when Sacred Heart is set, they have had nothing in close. You mentioned pushing the pace. That's been kind of the formula for success for this VMI team in their four wins and four losses early in the season. Again, they started off really hot, winning three of their first four. Since then, they've cooled off, dropped three of the last four. But as it stands, they're one and one in conference, four and four. And honestly, you know, as selfish as it sounds, you can't ask for much more than that. They got a shot at whatever they want to go for. Yeah, I mean, give Sacred Heart's defense credit again. They're probably putting the brakes on this VMI offense. There's been nothing doing from the top. All opportunities have come from the slot or been started at the X. Pioneers have been really and stout inside out. Another turnover there by the Pioneers. That was Restrecki who made it really hard on the clear. He was applying pressure from behind the entire time, and they steal possession back, 75 seconds to shoot. Yeah, it's almost unfortunate Sacred Heart caused the turnover because there was 10 seconds left on the shot clock, and VMI had nothing going on. Now with a long dodge from the slot, hits the outside of the net and bounces off. Yeah, they didn't reset the shot clock, so it did not hit the post. 60 seconds to shoot. Strecky gives it off from the X. Now finding Simon Moore. Moore's got a goal. You can see the help defense by the Pioneers just taking care of any openings that VMI could find on offense. This is Stamos. Stamos is the giving tree when it comes to this offense. He's got a bunch of apples on the year. That's Restrecki in the X. Again, shut down by some great defense. Now he beats his man, gets a shot, just misses the net. Yeah, and to your point, Restrecki behind the net next and just he has to basically reset the entire offense and throw it all the way out. That shot missed the net. Now there's 25 seconds to shoot. VMI's offense has got to put the foot on the gas a little bit here. Hartley Jordan at the top. Jordan's got a goal. Likes to give it off. Almost gets knocked out of the air. Now still getting rotated. 10 seconds to shoot. Goes all the way across the field. Again, five seconds now. And I don't think they're going to get a shot off. Open very, very he might launch smartly. one, can't handle it. That was very smart by Condolendo, just leaving that ball there, not going after the ground ball to give VMI a chance to just take it from behind because the shot clock was expiring. You're right, and it's things like that that the Pioneers have just been on top of this afternoon. They've really been good in every facet of the game. Long pass complete. Now Jake Ward with a head of steam. Gives it off to Garb. Garb and Ward usually patrolling the X. Sometimes they'll trade spots. Big play made to keep that possession in the Pioneers. Side of the field, that's Caden Broadnax. Big body junior. Sacred Heart probably pretty happy. They've had two long sets on defense to just 
Let their defenders get a little bit of a rest. Johnny Morgan looks like he might have an angle. What that? Oh, it, he rung the inside of the pipe. It is really unfortunate that that did not go in the back of the net because he juked out two defenders just with his stick. It looked like Johnny Morgan thought he had scored. The whistle sounds. The Pioneers will be awarded the possession with a fresh shot clock. This is Johnny Morgan again. Johnny Morgan with a couple fancy moves that, at the top. I mean, that was a shame that that ball did not go in the back of the net because that was even prettier than the behind-the-net goal by Ward. Just juked the defender out of his socks. There's Johnny Morgan who really earned a, a pipe ring. And the important part here, as you mentioned, fresh shot clock. Yeah, they got a 70-second set if they elect to take it. This is Caden Broadnax trying to use the speed. Gets bodied down. Great defensive play. The cadets are now on the break. That's that slick turf right there. Just lost a step, and uh, you're not going to get away with that too often. That was Nate Golding, the short stick midi. Cadets get a shot off. Again, Pazienza sees it the whole way through. Trying to cover it. Making it hard for the clear. Sketchy looking set on defense trying to get it out. He dragged that ball back into his crease. Pazienza. I don't think he realized he had a defender behind him. I don't either. Now he's looking to try to get it over midfield. Still isn't. Pazienza's out of the now, net. Now he's got a problem. Oh, man. Trying to win the race back. Pazienza oh, makes save. the save. With his shin sliding, Pazienza makes a frantic looking save. Don't blink now. Restrecki gets another save for Pazienza. Who stepped through the crease and Sacred Heart will take over. I mean, listen, he earned that save because he made the turnover, but what an unbelievable effort to get back into the crease. And if you're the Pioneers, it's just working out when it looks like it won't. They try to get a goal out of it, I the think, rain coming down. I think John Bosti's trying to calm his guys down a little bit here. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great timeout call. Another little quick play there. Jack Ramsey right on the center field line. Just flipped that ball over just to keep it from being there. As Pazienza is able to keep it close, the Pioneers leading by four. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato from Sacred Heart. We'll be right back. If you want to go into the sports communication and media field, there isn't a place that's located in a better spot in the country than Sacred Heart. You'll learn how to do every single job in the sports industry and give yourself the best chance to get hired right out. We can offer this at a master's level that really makes sense. So people can come here for one concentrated year and come out ready to work in the sports industry. We're here for lifers. We're here to develop your skills for a 40-year career in sports media. We're the perfect place to start. Welcome back to a second quarter that's been nothing short of phenomenal. Each team has scored as seven minutes have elapsed. A couple big saves from Pazienza keeping the Pioneers in the lead as we'll take a look at that frantic looking save made. You know, Thomas Houlihan there did enough to just delay that rush. Pazienza comes sliding back into his net and makes the save and then called on again and makes it a second time. And that is one of the best goal scorers in the conference who is ripping that one from very close. Pazienza, the junior out of Holtzville, New York, with a highlight reel 10 seconds. He's averaging 13.5 goals against so far this season, 97 saves, a save percentage just over 50. He started all seven games, and as we know, all seven games have been a loss in the loss column. He was in a backup role last year. He had a record of one and three. Now he is the guy for the Pioneers going forward. I'm showing you why there. As the Pioneers were the ones who called the timeout, trying to calm down after Pazienza put on a one-man show. Yeah, a lot of back and forth there. I think John Bosti knows how important this. Well, that was Sal uh, Micchio who really wanted to rip one. Yeah, just as I was talking about how important that possession was. It uh, curse of the commentator again. I'm really good at that. Conditions were sloppy during the commercial break. It was pouring. Now I look up from my notes and the rain has dissipated. Oh, big body. No whistle. Pioneers force a midfield turnover if they can recover it. And they do. Oh, he trades a body back. Physical at the half field line, but the Pioneers are on the attack. Yeah, those little hustle plays have been going in Sacred Heart's favor all day long. And this is Jake Ward. Not accustomed to seeing him at the top, but he's going to cut through the defense, knifing through, misses the net. 
Pioneer is able to win the race. And Sacred Heart, when they do get there, they've definitely been faster than VMI has today on both sides of the ball. So you get in front of the net like that, take your shot. This is Garb. You'll often see Garb and Ward behind the net. Oh, what? Again, Sacred Heart with those little quick passes to get guys into space. And O'Reilly just missed the net. O'Reilly, one of the tallest guys on the field. That helps when it comes to creating angles as he was trying to get in tight and just shoot it above his defender. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think uh, oh, there's, there's a, a flag foul. on the field. Yeah. It was on the uh, O'Reilly shot, I believe. And it is... It was thrown all the way from the uh, umpire at midfield. He saw something he didn't it's like. It's on VMI, so Sacred Heart will get a man up opportunity. Sacred Heart executing on only 23% of their power plays so far. They're 7 4 30. Conversely, the cadets are killing 55%. Yeah, the uh, man up opportunities have been a sore spot for this team this year. Really big one here. If you can go up by five, it would really put the pressure on VMI. On a day where everything's working, it seems like the Pioneers should feel confident. They got a full minute to do it, too. Locked up for a full minute. And that's O'Reilly rotating out of the X. Now O'Reilly's parked in the slot. Pioneers man up. They outnumber the cadets. Ward back to Garb. Garb wasn't ready for it. And that is a costly turnover. The cadets should be able to kill this one out. Yeah, a little too fancy there. Ward took that pass and then two guys closing in, tried to flick it back and just turn the ball over. First really silly turnover we've seen from the Pioneers today. It comes at a big moment, though. They're hoping that won't snowball. They go full field on the kill. They had a attackman parked down by the pylon. That also felt silly. Oh, yeah, no. very weird looking VMI play. is going to uh, be the beneficiary of just a weird bounce. There is 10 seconds remaining on the penalty kill for the cadets. They will be back at even strength here in a second. Cadets trailing by four. And even up a man, Sacred Heart, not pressing on defense, just playing patient in front of the net. Now at even strength, the cadets able to set up a bit of an offensive set. They've got 35 seconds to work with should they choose to use it. A roll dodge from behind the net. Did he find the... What? I have no idea. It, Maybe there's somebody It looked in the like crease. Panzienza went into the net to get that ball. I, 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 I am speechless. I'm not sure what just I, happened. I, I mean, both officials are right there looking at it. It must have been on the side of the net. Maybe. It looked like he definitely retrieved it from his own yeah, net. Yeah, no, I mean, nobody on VMI celebrated like there was yeah. a goal. That, that was very bizarre. As it stands, Pioneer's up by four. Garb loses his stick. Yeah, another defensive turnover. Uh, this has been a pretty crazy 60 second sequence. Yeah, this is, this is odd. Five minutes to play in the first half. Pioneers have dominated for most of the game. Right now it's looking like uh, something's getting away from them. Yeah, they are, they are up by four, but with how well they've played this quarter, you would really like to see another goal or two, especially with the one-minute man advantage. Um, they'll take this if they can keep it this way, but and the, apparently there was some ghost goal that we both missed. <laughs> the cadets now patiently trying to establish some sort of normalcy. Dodge from the top. Find somebody in the slot. Misses the net. Hits Rastruki. Off Rastruki. Rebound shot. Miss hits the outside of the net again. Panzienza probably thought that went behind and out of play because it looked like he was running back to be the backup and win the race. And it was it just was up in the air and fell on the uh, attacker's stick. Yeah, it was um, Will Duffy who throttled a shot from the slot, went right off of Rastruki's elbow in the X, and then bounced up to a, a cadet parked right next to Pazienza. Pazienza had no idea where that ball was. And then with a wide open net, and I missed who shot it for VMI, just hit the outside of the cage, missed the net. Pioneer's getting a couple lucky breaks. Not sure why VMI has the ball now, though. Oh, penalty, Sacred Heart. Another flag down on the field. I believe that is one of the Sacred Heart defensemen. I definitely see a long pole down there. He's on a knee, so I can't catch the number. Brandon Sweeney. 
Brandon Sweeney is now in the box for a full minute. VMI man up for a change. Four minutes left to play in this half. This is a big man up opportunity. I was about to say, this is a big kill if Sacred Heart can get it. Fully rotating the, uh, the umbrella set right now. playing a game of catch and Sacred Heart is more than happy to let them do that. Yeah, they were looking for the Pioneers to break their defense and get anxious, but they did not. This is now Will Duffy trying to get something going. A little surprised VMI is not trying to do a little bit more through the middle. Sacred Heart down a man. I believe that's where Struki who hits pipe again. The Pioneers are getting every ounce of help they can take. Struki's going to let one go again. Alex to hit it Give it off. This is Hartley. Hartley Jordan to Will Duffy. Duffy shut down. Good defense. Duffy. Penalty is killed, but VMI has a lot of offensive momentum right now. Back to even strength, but VMI, again, as you said, just passing the ball confidently. It feels like they are very much due after a wacky couple minutes. It does feel like a little bit of controlled chaos for the Pioneers, at least on defense. That was the, the really only good look VMI had. They hit the post. Beats his man, throws the brakes on. That's Hartley Jordan. Hartley Jordan's the midfielding senior. He's got a goal so far. Duffy's moving the ball well today as well. Who loses it in the cradle. Restrucky recovers. In tight goal scored for the cadets. That was the Restrucky assist. Goal comes by the way of Luke Mrenza. With only four seconds left on the shot clock. I mean, you can only flirt with fire for so long if you're the Pioneers, but I will say a little bit lucky there for VMI. When that ball hit the turf, two of the defenders went for it, and it left them wide open in front of the net, and just an easy finish there. No goalie's going to stop that. VMI cuts the lead to three goals with just three minutes left in this half. That was Luke Mrenz as the attacking sophomore to Nashville, Tennessee. Scores his 17th goal on the year he's got three hat tricks including their last game and he's scored 12 goals last year as a freshman Again, he's just a sophomore but he's been contributing offensively since his arrival in 2022 Thomas taking the face-offs again for Sacred Heart wins his second so that's a big face-off win for the Pioneers especially after giving up a goal they just get over the line in time you're right the Cadets have been patrolling that midfield line pretty physically so far. This is Morgan O'Reilly trying to beat the defense. Very physical cut. Alex to give it off. Pioneers with 40 seconds to work with. 20 meters out. Gives it off to Ward, who goes back to O'Reilly. O'Reilly antsy to get a shot off. He really wants to get in tight. Great defense for the cadets. I yeah, don't mind him using his body a little bit, though. Sacred Heart doesn't have a lot of those punishing offensive players. Mikio elects to give it off to Ward. Again, Ward patrolling the offense. 15 seconds to play. Trying to make something happen. A couple of times now, Ward has gotten just run around the field, do a little bit of cardio, and gets his hands free. There's Carson Spooner. Not a ton of time now for Sacred Heart, though. Nine seconds. Spooner was trying to find his angle. Now this is Morrissey. Takes a shot, save made by Norris. Adam Norris started off really hot. And then the Pioneer, oh, big play made to force the offensive zone turnover. Now trying to win the race, can't. Over his back, he might recover. Oh, flick of the wrist there. That's Candelino who was able to go over the midfield line. Now the Pioneers are just trying to get it. All the way out of his net to try to get it. And this is the second time he'll leave his crease vacant. Pazienza still in the mix. And he comes away with the ball. Pazienza just trying to get back. Flips it over. Now he's going to rush back to his crease. Jake Garb somehow comes up with it. How is that not he right? sends it to Jake Ward who's all alone. And Ward scores it. What a crazy looking play. Jake Ward picks up another goal. I'm more than running out of words to describe I, what I we're mean, seeing. Pazienza left his net wide open to just go after the ball himself, picks up the ground ball, just a miracle throw to the middle of the field, and just wide open, Ward will not miss from there. Ward cherry picking, Jake Garb throws a Hail Mary Aaron Rodgers style, Ward comes down with it, and now somehow the Pioneers are back up 
by four with just 50 seconds left to play. And that is a big goal because it did feel like VMI was starting to tw tilt the field a little bit, but absolute chaos. This quarter has been one of the most chaotic I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Absolutely. This is very fun to watch. Both teams putting on a show. Now VMI seeing if they can't join the score column once again, kicking it out to Duffy. Yep. And the timeout is called again. This is a big possession. They could tilt the tides back in their favor before half. Yeah, very smart timeout by VMI. Can't take him with you, so um, may as well use it. Got 44 seconds here. Get a fresh set of eyes on the field and make something happen. And we are staying here as we will revisit the goal scorers for both teams. Hartley Jordan's got one goal. Rustrecki's got a goal and an assist. He had that beautiful assist that led to the Hartley Jordan finish. Luke Morenz has got the third goal for these cadets. As far as the Pioneers go, they're picking up help from multiple different players. Johnny Morgan's got one, Carson Spooner, Mike Morsecki, Jake Garb. Now Jake Ward's got a pair, and Nikki Cassano's got one of the nicest goals on the day with the Fogo minus the go. He elects to take it from the full 50 meters and buries it one-on-one. -on -one. And here, if you're John Bosti, you're just telling your boys, stay patient, do the things you've been doing the first 30 minutes of this game, shut this down, and then go into the half with a uh, four-goal lead. Both goalies credited with six saves so far. It seemed like almost all of those six for Adam Norris, the freshman, in net for the cadets came in the first quarter. Since then, the Pioneers' offense have figured it out. Alex Pazienza, conversely, has turned it on late with a couple highlight reel saves. He's been solid all afternoon, saving six of the nine shots on goal. And when it comes to the cadets, it seems like they're just missing by inches almost every time. So if you're the Pioneers, you feel good about the four-goal lead, but it's definitely not the most comfortable four-goal lead I've seen in my life. No. You'd rather have it than not have it, of course, but Sacred Heart definitely could use to tighten things down a little bit. They loosened up after that uh, that first quarter of pretty much pure dominance. So The Cadets struck first with a goal very quickly, and then the Pioneers scored five unanswered. And since then, it's been pretty evenly matched with both teams going on runs as it stands. Score is 7-3 to three in the Pioneers' favor with 30 seconds remaining in this half. VMI is being very patient. Yeah, they're very happy to milk this clock, so they take the final shot, and Sacred Heart very happy to let them do it. This is Simon Moore hanging out right now. He's a sophomore attacking midfielder from Annapolis, Maryland. He gets a pick. Oh. Rotates it to Restrucky. Big play by Pazienza. Now with 10 seconds, we'll see if he launches it downfield. He does. Jake Garb's before, going so. up for it. Five seconds to play. Oh, man, Jake Ward scores it. Jake Ward gets the hat trick. Somehow the Pioneers end up back on the board before the half closes. It, and it's literally a carbon copy of the goal they just scored. Pazienza gets the turnover, just throws the ball to the middle of the field, and then Morgan O'Reilly with a brilliant pass to Ward, who's just wide open. Two break rays in 40 seconds. Jake Ward, you got everything going. He could not seem to miss the net if he tried. Ward probably had an extra second to shoot that ball. It doesn't matter. It went to the back of the net. But what a turn of events for the Pioneers. Nightmare scenario for the Cadets. They call a timeout and then waste 20 seconds of the clock and somehow still end up on the receiving end of a last-second goal. The horn sounds in the half ends the pioneers leading by a school a score of eight goals to three jake ward now finishes off the hat trick from campus field we are being treated to an exciting affair as one way one-sided as the scoreboard seems both teams are very much ingrained in the action as the pioneers will come off to a standing ovation from the home crowd who are braving the elements VMI electing just to go into the corner and hang out in the rain for the 12 minute halftime period. Pioneers are going to go warm up those fingers. Still kind of in awe. Yeah, what an exciting what a, second quarter we just got. Just back to back, almost exactly the same goals and Sacred Heart up by five. Pioneers are out shooting the cadets. 
21 to 18. They've assisted on most of their goals. They've moved the ball well. As far as the cadets go, their offense has not been sluggish or lackluster. The Pioneers' defense has just been absolutely buzzing. They're protecting Pazienza, and then even when they can't protect Pazienza, Pazienza has been seeing the ball very well. And Sacred Heart's defense doing really well. They're playing patient. They've stuck to the game plan throughout this game. The offense is clicking on all cylinders. And Sacred Heart, you know, you do have to say, has been the beneficiary of some of that chaos. And Molly Jacob is standing field side. Molly, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Coach, you guys have been staying on top of the ball in all areas, especially face-off. Jake Ward with a great ending to the first half. What seems to be working? Uh, it's just we're, we're playing gritty, I think, is the most important thing. We're being efficient, and it's just what we've been working on all week in practice, like we talked about yesterday. Um, you know, we're being just, just consistent with what we've been doing every day, and I think it's, it's showing right now. Where are your areas of priority for the second half? Uh, clearing the ball. I think that's ground balls and clearing are the two probably the most important things that we can concentrate on for the rest of the game. Um, you know, we just got to stay within ourselves. This is a gritty team. VMI came back on LIU a couple weeks ago in the same situation. So we just got to stay within ourselves and just keep doing what we're doing and not worrying about that big thing in the end zone, just worrying about the process of minute to minute playing no, a gritty and playing tough. And playing for the military, of course. Good luck, Coach. We'll see you after the second half. Thank you, Molly, and thank you, Coach. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato will be right back for the second half from Fairfield. Dear college sports, there's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And for college sports. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 40. Touchdown. Michaela Burgess. An incredible finish by Hall. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next. The best in Connecticut higher education. Outstanding nursing and health professions programs, premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. Earned, not given. In the NEC, we know where we come from. And realize how hard we work to get here. We attack every day as a new challenge. We become stronger. We build our character. We put in the work to earn respect. There are no handouts. The word quit is not in our vocabulary. Adversity? Bring it on. Because the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. NEC Hoops. New challenges. Same grit. All earned, nothing given.
When you live where we live, when you meet the kind of people we get to meet, share their seasons, their good times, and when they need a helping hand, you pick up pretty quick that every little thing is a little more than it seems. It's my Tuesday morning. It's my helper. It's my livelihood. It's my pleasure. It's at the heart of the community. It's more than the food. It's my big why. want to go into the sports communication and media field, there isn't a place that's located in a better spot in the country than Sacred Heart. You'll learn how to do every single job in the sports industry and give yourself the best chance to get hired right out. We can offer this at a master's level that really makes sense. So people can come here for one concentrated year and come out ready to work in the sports industry. We're here for lifers. We're here to develop your skills for a 40-year career in sports media. We're the perfect place to start. My old school didn't have a master's program in media and broadcasting, and so I knew I had to find a place that was going to offer that and that I could also still play football at a high level. Sacred Heart checked every single box. They have a growing program that's doing very well, and it's in the media hub of the world. I've learned things that you wouldn't learn from just being in a classroom unless your teachers were professionals who have actually done the things that we want to do. That's what puts Sacred Heart above everyone. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next, the best in Connecticut higher education. Outstanding nursing and health professions programs, premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs, a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. Hello and welcome back to Campus Field in Fairfield, Connecticut, where the Pioneers are putting on a show. They've outscored the Virginia Military Institute Cadets 8-3 to three in the first half. They're out shooting them as well, and in net, Alex Pazienza has outsaved his opponent. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato, and Joe, what's been the story of the first half? I think in some sense it has to be Alex, pa Alex Panzianza, right? Some really big saves, two incredible passes all the way down the field that led to the last two goals that Sacred Heart scored. But everything going right for Sacred Heart right now, so you got to make sure you keep that momentum moving forward. So we see a look at one of the prettiest goals today. That was Johnny Morgan. And there's Jake Ward over the shoulder behind the back. However you want to say it, Jake Ward buries a pretty one. That was when the Pioneers started to take over towards the end of the half. These were earlier in the second quarter. This is VMI's 
first quarter goal now. Jake Ward with that scramble at the end of the first half. That was with two seconds on the clock. Jake Ward somehow burying it after Pazienza goes full field. And the Pioneers steal some of the momentum before half. Evan Cormier, Joe Fortunato in the booth. Molly Jacob is field side as the Pioneers win the opening faceoff of the second half. And we're ready for some more exciting lacrosse as a flag flies and the Pioneers will be man up early. Yeah, and, and this is another part of the game that's really been working out for Sacred Heart, and it's the faceoffs. They've been winning a lot of faceoffs. They've been winning a lot of big faceoffs. And you can see the importance right there. Sacred Heart driving the ball down the field, draw a penalty, man up opportunity. Looks like the Pioneers are going to be man up for only 30 seconds, I believe. Yes, sir. Shot clock will be reset. Pioneers with a fresh set up by five, looking to pick up where they left on. This is Morgan O'Reilly. O'Reilly was anxious to get something going on the offensive side of things towards the end of last, last half. See if that will continue. Sal Mikio. He had the assist on the Jake Ward goal at the end of the half. Mikio's got an assist and a goal, I believe. Morgan O'Reilly at the top. Really wants to find an angle. Gets to Garb in tight, but unable to come down with the pass. Forcing and we are back at even strength. Forcing it a little bit there if you're Sacred Heart. You don't need to do that. It's up by five. Now just trying to clear it are the cadets making it hard as Jake Ward forces him to retreat, gives it back to his goalie, who sends it all the way downfield to a willing recipient. Now VMI is outnumbered, but still trying to set something up. Sun is poking its head out for the first time today, but it is uh, still raining out there, so expecting those slick conditions to continue. Can't feel my toes in the booth. I can only imagine what their exposed legs feel like down there. They're running, though. We're sitting. And a good defensive play from behind. That was the Pioneers' David Barkus, the graduate from Bedford, Mass. David Barkus just a little quick hook of the stick. Pop that ball out. Now Simon Moore. Moore's got a goal on the day. Gives it off to Jordan. Jordan towards the middle. He buries it from deep. And Hartley Jordan gets VMI back on the board, trailing by just four now. That's Jordan's second goal of the afternoon. Yeah, Ponzian's are really upset with himself after that ball went in the back of the net. We've seen VMI take those shots all day. Sacred Heart's defense keeping them way away from the net, and I don't know if he was screened or there were just too many bodies in front, but not the best goal to give up. But really good defense by Sacred Heart. There was a lot of traffic as that was Hartley Jordan burying it from about 20 meters out. He just beat Pazienza low between the legs and now winning the faceoff. But not giving up was the Pioneers, M.P. Thomas. Yeah, MP, Basti very surprisingly changing his faceoff man up. Casano uh, was not doing a bad job, and M.P. Thomas has come in and just done a great job. Ooh, behind the back pass, and the Pioneers are back on it. Back, another, another one. Another behind the back pass. Morgan sends it over the net. Jake Ward's there to recover. Sagan Hart getting very fancy. I don't think I've ever seen two back-to-back -back confidence back passes is premium for this Pioneer offense right now, as it should be. They've got everything going. Eight goals in the first 30. And now cutting and shooting. Save made by Norris. Freshman able to control the rebound and give it off. Yeah, not the best shot considering how much room he had. But that is where Sacred Heart has seen their offense this, this game, just cutting down the alley and beating their man with speed. VMI able to get a rare easy clear. Usually you'll see the Pioneer midfielders making it difficult. Now they'll get the personnel they want. From 30 meters out, still taking their time. Already 40 seconds elapsed on the shot clock. And every possession matters right now when you're trying to claw back into it. Trying to cut from the slot. Shut down. Restrucky behind the net. Dodge attempt. Good help defense. Somehow splits them. Sacred Heart more than happy to let the ball hang out out there. 22 seconds left on the shot clock. Very patient set by VMI. Now a long dodge. This is Hartley Jordan who's got the hot hand. Finds Restrecki down low. Restrecki now operating out of the X. 
Ooh, bounce pass across the crease. Not sure if he was trying to shoot it. That should be Sacred Heart ball, and it is. I mean, that's just a clinic in the Pioneers' defense of just not panicking. VMI couldn't get the ball anywhere near the front of the net. And as we've talked about, Sacred Heart is more than fine letting VMI play with the ball up by the 30-yard line. It's just not, it's not a dangerous spot. You're absolutely right. That was a great Whoa. set as an errant pass keeps Pazienza on his toes. Pazienza been, has been a busy man. I think he, uh, he's earned a steak dinner tonight one way or another. Yeah, he's definitely putting miles on in the crease. Garb's trying to beat the ball. He Pretty does. Cool. Very good hustle plays by Sacred Heart in, in these chaotic moments of which have been plentiful in this game. This team is hungry for their first win. Just their second home game so far. They've been on the coach buses all year. Mikio gets something going from the top. Beats his defender. Finds him in tight. Morgan O'Reilly scores. Mikio picking up another apple. And Morgan O'Reilly is going to go celebrate with his teammates. Putting the Pioneers back up by five. And this is the third goal we've seen where Sacred Heart has had two guys cutting toward the net and just a little flick pass. It goes mo no more than three feet just to the wide open cutter who's able to put it splits home. Him. Sal Mikio splits him and gives the Kobe fish shake as Morgan O'Reilly is able to celebrate his goal. The 6'4 attacking junior from Rockville Center, New York, finally getting in on the, on the action. It's happened enough that it, it feels like a set play by John Bosti that it's just they're just splitting the defense and it's working. I totally agree. We've seen a lot of man defense from VMI so far. And MP Thomas with another face-off win. He would have uh, gotten the violation one way or another, but he picks it up organically, and it's it's been a difference maker for Sacred Heart to just have this much possession. You're absolutely right. That was Ryan Stout who put the wheels on and got the Pioneers in good position to go back on the attack. Now Jake Ward from the X. Trying to throw on the Deeks. Can't beat him. Ooh, swim move. Shot. Save made. It's going to be a tough one. I think VMI will get back up, and they will. Pioneers see if they elect to make it a hard clear on a four check. Long pass complete. VMI back on offense. Feels like it's been a minute. Now this is Hartley Jordan who's been showing off in the offensive set. Hartley Jordan is the midi from Virginia. Six, now eight goals for Jordan Hartley. Eight goals, four assists, 12 points, and the Pioneers force a turnover. Did that pass go over his head? It did. Almost gave it right back. Sacred Heart should be a little bit more patient on their clears where they have time. You're up by five. No need to really rush things. It's one of those days where somehow it just keeps working out. If you're the Pioneers, you're just hoping that that ball doesn't start to bounce the other way. That pass is picked off by Norris and given off to his midfielder. Norris taking a page out of Ponzianza's book. Now VMI trying to press the pace a little bit. Finds the Pioneers out of position. Long cut gives it off to Hartley. And again, that's a moment where Sacred Heart not set defensively. Quick turnover by VMI. They don't press the issue. Jordan Hartley now directing traffic. Pioneers seem a little frantic. There was a five-on-five five set for some time. Yeah, no, just no. It's a little surprising that VMI is not trying to. For, I mean, they're down by five. Finds him in the slot. Oh. Pazienza takes that one off the thigh, hopefully. You hope it's the thigh. I was just thinking that. He's moving around. It was the thigh. <laughs> it was definitely yeah, the thigh. It was, if it was not the thigh, you would have known. Big save by Pazienza. He's close to double digits as he's really been the star for this Pioneer team so far. On and both sides of the ball, you could say. <laughs> he might have an assist or two. And the Pioneers, as opposed to VMI, who's been very patient, the Pioneers are definitely controlling the pace as Mikio is going to take a shot early in the shot clock. Of course, you got Jake Ward back there. You that's can take not a bad shots. idea. He, he moves in. He has back up. He gets into the front of the net. and Just let it go. See what happens. You have 48 seconds left on the shot clock. Sal Mikio is one of the most dangerous goal scorers today. He's been more uh, accepting of the assist role. This is Morgan O'Reilly. He wanted to take one. Garb. Ooh, they're all antsy to shoot. The Pioneers smartly elect to pull out as there was no angle for either of them. 
25 yeah. seconds to work with. Me and my plan with a little bit of fire there, leaving them open enough to think about it. What a... Oh, oh. that was Mikio again with the with the, uh, the eyes. Yeah, did he miss the net? He Mikio did. with a nice little pass, and then I think it was Garb just tried to go behind the back and missed the net completely. Not a bad idea, though. 15 seconds to shoot. Now Garb at the top. Tries to get it to Mikio. Good defense. Now Mikio's trying to win the race. Still boxing him out. He might just need to throw that away. He might have the or net open. The net, yeah. He does. Norse was able to get back in time. Mikio didn't see the empty net. That was really, really smart by Mikio. That was not a bad play at all. Now he gets to the sideline for some well-earned rest. And if you're Sacred Heart, you are completely fine with burning 80 seconds off the game clock, uh, even if you're not scoring. Obviously, you'd like to, but VMI has taken their time on offense, which can't last forever. But the clock is your friend right now if you're the Pioneers. As Bosti mentioned, head coach John Bosti, before halftime, he was talking about how VMI has already made a couple comebacks this season. So the Pioneers are definitely not going to want to let off the gas as Patsy Enns is sending one of his now what famous a, a, full field yeah. passes. Jake Ward's trying to beat the defense. No, oh, he just hit the post, I think. Yeah, Ward's got a hat trick already. I mean, Sacred Heart is winning every single 50-50 ball right now. Every hustle play, every turnover, Sacred Heart is on the good end of it. Morgan O'Reilly finds Ward in tight, and Ward gets his fourth. Jake Ward puts the Pioneers in double digits. They now lead by a score of 10 to 4. And you know what? Give Morgan O'Reilly a lot of credit here. He, he has an absolute cannon, and he gets the ball with his hands free, and he's in a perfect position to shoot this ball. And instead, he takes this time, he looks around, he takes the extra pass and gives it to Ward, who's wide open, and he finishes it. Beautiful play. Jake Ward with a perfect finish. And Adam Norris just kind of left out to dry there in his crease one-on-one -on -one from just a few feet out. Offense wins that battle nine times out of ten. Jake Ward was not happy with your comment about Sal Micchio being the goal scoring leader on this team and just taking it into his own hands, his 15th on the year. 15 goals on the young year for the sophomore. As a freshman, Jake Ward buried 17 goals and nine assists, and he earned NEC Rookie of the Year honors. Of course, now they are in the Metro Atlantic as the NEC has disbanded their men's lacrosse conference for two years, just for the time being a temporary uh, disbandment. That's why Wagner, LIU, and Sacred Heart are now in the MAC. VMI trying to get a point back. That was Jordan Hartley. Hartley's got two goals so far. And that's that pioneer defense again. At Hard work. press forces a turnover. Pazienza puts him on his hit, back. And he has no stick. No, no stick, problem. no goalie. I don't even know why he would go back in the net without it. What's going on? Pazienza's on the bench now. Yeah, they're going to swap. They're going to try to quick. Misses the net. That is a costly miss. I have no idea what. His stick must have broken. Had he, to have. He's not even trying to get it. He's getting another one. Yeah, you can see it seems a little flimsy in the middle. The stick is still laying in the middle of the field, by the way. It's the seventh defender. Yeah. Right in the X. How is nobody picking Okay, there they go. They're going to pick it up now. Very interesting. Let's I, see if it so, snaps. Yeah, yep. it did. The bottom of <laughs> yeah, there it is. I didn't, I didn't know why he was going back into the net without the stick. And smart for him to just vacate the crease and have a defender go in there. You'd rather have something. Say so hard, very lucky not to give up a goal. There. Very, Th very This game lucky. has had anything chaotic that could possibly happen has happened in this game. Very fun. And we have a whole quarter and a half left. Pioneers leading at home 10-4. to four. The Pioneers, of course, still hungry for their first win of the year. They're 0-7, 0-2 in conference. These cadets are 4-4 four and four on the young season. They've won one and lost one when it comes to MAC play. Now being patient with a fresh shot clock. I keep saying it. Sacred Heart is more than happy to let VMI play catch. They, they don't care. VMI with a fresh shot clock. Now 50 to shoot. Pazienza, the goalkeeper, with a fresh stick. Hopefully this one has a couple saves left. Of course, the other one is doing some work this afternoon. Trying to find the angle at the top was Thomas Williamson. Williamson is playing catch with Stamos up there. Back to Stamos. Stamos to Restrecki. Down to Hartley. Williamson cannot handle it. 25 seconds left, and that's a turnover. 
And Williamson will get barked at by the Pioneer bench. I think VMI still has possession. Yep, they won the race. They're going to get 20 seconds to shoot. Of course, they've had 75. They have not taken one shot in this set. He barely misses the net on a screamer from the slot. Yeah, that, that one's out there in the middle of the fairway. Um, just a, a very quick Sacred Heart, just not, not set there for a second, and that pass goes across the field. Or Sacred Strecky. Heart is very, very happy to do uh, it. VMI has not been in front of the net at all. You're absolutely right in that shot. Didn't make it through the defense either. It's a shot clock violation. Shot clock sounds. That was a stout defensive set for the Pioneers, and it seems like VMI is taunting them, trying to get them out of position. And uh, it's just not working. I mean, give Sacred Heart credit. They've they've stuck to the game plan, and VMI just has no answer to this defensive uh, this defensive uh, positioning by the Pioneers. It's been positioning. It's been patience, and it's been prowess as the pioneers are refusing to give up their spot this is jake ward who i guess hasn't scored enough goals this afternoon he wants one more give him five likes to give it off now trying to get something going is morsi morecci has one goal garb taking the x from ward garb trying to do something ward's parked in front he finds mickey in the slot Oh, great. Good defense. Ward with the rebound. Pat, er, Morris, Morris makes the save. Huge save there. Huge was a save. big save. Sacred Heart will end up getting a fresh shot clock out of this. And this is fine for the Pioneers. You can see Morgan O'Reilly putting his hand up. Adam Norris has allowed 10 goals, but he's made some very big and difficult saves so far. This could easily be an 18-point ball game yeah, for the Pioneers. Not sure what the officials are talking about right now. Not sure what happened. I mean, Sacred Heart's going to have the ball with 56 seconds left to, to shoot, but you can see right before that stoppage of play, Morgan O'Reilly putting his hands up, telling his, defend or his uh, attacking teammates, calm down, no need to rush. Had to be an a, a equipment issue as a short stick came off for a short stick. So there's nothing of that nature. With 40 seconds to shoot, Garb gives it off to O'Reilly. Mikio being taunted by the defense. Ward's got the hot hand, gives it to Mikio, who goes to O'Reilly. Garb to O'Reilly. Again, they're taking a page out of VMI's book. O'Reilly gets in tight. Bounce Ooh. shot rings the pipe. That was a great shot by O'Reilly. That was a tricky angle from O'Reilly, electing to take the bounce shot, standing at almost six foot five inches tall, changing the eye level. VMI is outnumbering the Pioneers right now, but they, again, they do not take advantage of it. You'd like to see at some point a change of pace. For this offensive attack, they've only got four goals in nearly three full quarters. It depends on who the U is. I'm sure John Bosti's very happy with what's happening right now. Absolutely. They're averaging about 13 goals a game right now being held to four. And just, again, another look at it, Sacred Heart. VMI, the only time that they've had easy passes have been out here. And you're not going to score from out here. Anything that tries to go across the field, anything that tries to happen in the middle of the net is only coming from an isolation play. Hits the back of the net from Just the like X. That. There's no, the Sacred Heart giving them no room to breathe. BMI, if they want to score, they're having to steal every angle they get. Pioneers are not giving it to them. As long as Sacred Heart gets the clear in the next 11 seconds, they can hold for the final shot of the quarter. 50 and seconds to play. This is going to be a little tight for the Pioneers. Just got to get it over, and they do. And turn it over. Jake Ward was unable to get there, but he's calling. Yeah, Ward is saying his stick was being held, but now VMI has to do something that they have not been accustomed to doing today, which is kind of rush the offense a little bit. Cadets with 30 seconds to play in this quarter, and they send one full field. Pazienza tries to meet him there. Flag flies. Whistle is not sounded, though. Let's see what the penalty is. I think it's going to be a push. Definitely going against the Pioneers. Yeah, I think it's a push by Jack Ramsey, I think. 
I agree. The sophomore from Bayshore, he New seems York. seems to be doing the uh, walk of shame to the penalty box. He's definitely pleading his case I, or I, perhaps I, seeking an explanation. Yeah, I felt it was a little soft, but that's not the first penalty I have not agreed with today. Six on five for the last 26 seconds of this quarter. I can't imagine that's going to be a full minute. No, 30 seconds. VMI now able to set something up. They'll have the last shot, hopefully. If you remember in the first half, they set something up, and with 20 seconds, somehow allowed a full field pass. Ten seconds to play. VMI still, they just can't get in tight. Yeah, give a lot of credit to Sacred Heart. This is this is where VMI's had most of the offense right here. Four seconds to play. Yeah, Hartley Jordan retreats. Very interesting, and the horn will sound. I mean, it feels like Sacred Heart has just strangled the life out of this VMI uh, offense here, not even taking a shot. Very surprising. Shu has played excellently as three quarters have elapsed. 15 minutes to play from Campus Field. Evan Cormier alongside Joe Fortunato stay with us for the commencement of the fourth quarter from Fairfield, Connecticut. are your 2022 Northeast Conference Baseball Champions. She did not miss that time. Olivia Ewell has given St. Francis a big lead now at 6-1. to one. And here comes Wilcox on the run. One on three. Oh, takes whoa, it to the hole. Whoa, Nearly whoa, whoa. Nearly blocked by the rim, but he finishes with the whoa. flourish. Up the middle of the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Merrimack with an answer. Raptor caps it off with a 5K victory. Stanley against Bergdorf. Spin again! Oh. Wow! Once again this time. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity. One to be seized. Built upon. And made better. For their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. Welcome back to Campus Field. Evan Cormier, Joe Fortunato. There's 15 minutes left to play and we'll hear from Molly Jacob, who's field side, Molly. Thank you, Evan. This team relies on its veteran players to release the energy and emphasizes staying true to who they are as a group. The three captains, Thomas Houlihan, Nick Handy, and Ryan Stout, have really shifted the gears into making sure this team stays true to themselves and that no matter what, they embrace the love that they have for the game of lacrosse. And junior Morgan O'Reilly is playing his first game back this season and is making it memorable as he scored a goal at the beginning of the second half. Back to you guys. Thank you, Molly. As we get ready to kick things off in this fourth quarter, there's five seconds remaining on the Sacred Heart penalty. They will most likely kill it off. VMI is definitely applying some pressure early. Yeah, I'll, uh, I guess rescind my, I don't know why VMI didn't shoot the ball. They wanted to keep possession in the fourth uh, quarter. So that made sense. Now VMI with a little bit of urgency. They're trailing by six with 15 minutes to play. They've only been able to get four past Goldmeister, Alex Panzienza. Another wide set for VMI. They just have not been able to penetrate this defense. Hartley, Jordan Hartley has not been shy when it comes to taking shots like that. And that's what you force if you're the pioneers and you, you just you keep them at bay. You take anything you can get if you're VMI, especially now. You need goals. 14 minutes to play. Five on the shot clock. Just trying to get one off and another defensive teach tape from these pioneers. Yeah, this, is, this has been something special by the pioneers on defense. Everything is working at home today. Pioneers looking to close it out and capture their first victory of the year. And on offense now, the, the tone kind of changes for Sacred Heart, although obviously if you can do that, 
Morgan O'Reilly rolls one in. Five hole off the feed from Morshi. That, that is probably the slowest goal O'Reilly has ever scored in his life. That ball was moving about two miles per hour. Known for being able to just rip it top corner. Quick little pass and he just floats oh, it underneath the uh, goalkeeper's wickets. Just showcasing some awareness and that he's not a one-trick pony. Correct. I, and I was just about to say, if you're Sacred Heart, obviously score if you can, but the Pioneers are more than happy to just milk the shot clock for everything it's worth at this point. Just kind of put the landing gear down on this uh, this game. Morgan O'Reilly credited with his second goal of the afternoon off the Michael Moreshi assist. Pioneers now leading by seven. Another faceoff. And they're back in the action. Morgan O'Reilly wants another one. Norris sees it all the way through. That was a very good save by Norris. And kind of what you don't want if you're Sacred Heart. Uh, you, you want to burn as much time as you can at this point. And this is a MAC conference game. This would be a big win if the Pioneers can close it out. It's the only time these two teams will meet this year, in the regular season at least. Pioneers now stand in dead last in the MAC. They're 0-2. Of course, it's not the end of the world. Most of the teams in the MAC are one and one like these here VMI cadets nothing doing forced to give it off again Will Duffy does get a step but the help defense forces him to give it up that ball went off a helmet I believe and it will be a sacred heart ball yeah it looked like it hit um, a VMI player with his back turned Getting it over midfield. I think he's arguing with the official, but I saw what the official saw. It's John Murray who was able to get the clear done, and there's definitely some concession from the stands. That's Spooner and Moreshi at the top. Now back to Sal Micchio, who's seeing the, the field very well so far. He's got a handful of assists and a goal as well. Spooner tries to find the angle. Shoots Ooh. and scores. Spooner from deep. And the Pioneers are up by eight. Carson Spooner just low to high. Ripped that top corner. Maybe using a couple of those defenders as a screen there. But he wasted no time. He got his hands free. Take a look. Here, just a quick little look. And oh, man. Not as high as I thought it was, man. It was a rising precision shot from at least 20 meters out for Carson Spooner, the attacking senior from Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Carson Spooner scores his 12th of the year. He's got three assists to boot, 15 points. This is his second or his sixth multiple goal game. He's scored in five straight now. Carson Spooner is definitely providing a lot of primary scoring for these Pioneers. Another face-off violation. VMI will steal a possession down eight, 12 minutes to play. We've mentioned it a couple times. The Pioneers have been right there on numerous occasions. Seems like today, at least for the time being, they've put it all together. Hopefully a sign of things to come for this Pioneer team. VMI not getting the 13 goals that they've grown accustomed to. Sacred Heart not, not giving anything to this VMI offense. This is Hartley Jordan. Jordan takes a shot. Pazienza wears it off the chest, and his defense falls on the ball you know, and in, accidentally. In, sorry, Evan. In the few moments where Sacred Heart has messed up on defense and VMI has gotten their hands free, Pazienza has been there to just shut the door. It's a winning combination for the Pios. Seems like they're working so hard to get a good look. And Pazienza has ruined it for him. At least going to his offhand, ripping the shot, was Will Duffy. The defender was shading him inside, elected to go outside, and tries to go cross-body on Pazienza, but Pazienza able to body it up again. Pestering these offensive players has been Sacred Heart defense. Not scared to follow him out either. They'll take him... 30 meters deep if they need to. 
He shoots Ooh. it and Pazienza makes a textbook save with the net. Splitting that one. Reaching as far as he could to that bottom corner. Keeping VMI off the board. He dug that one out like a, a first baseman on a throw from shortstop. VMI has not scored a goal this half, I don't believe, correct? I believe it was 8-3. I think they got, I think they got one early, early in the third, third quarter. It's been far enough away that my memory does not serve me. Sacred Heart defense putting on a show. This is Johnny Morgan. Morgan was involved in the action early. I believe he scored the first goal of the game. Now this is Garb. Garb's got a lot of time on ball as well. Again, taking their time, just 10 minutes to play. They've got a comfortable eight-goal lead. We were talking about, as Garb likes to shoot, when we were talking about how the four-goal lead felt a little uneasy, now the eight-goal lead is feeling like the Pioneers are in the driver's seat. Yeah, when you get to a point where an opposing team has to score a goal a minute on average to, uh, to tie the game, generally speaking, you're in pretty good shape. This is Jake Ward. I believe he's got four. Ward sends it up top to Johnny Morgan. And if you're seeing a less uh, aggressive Sacred Heart offense that is by design, time is their friend right now. Ten seconds to shoot. He steals the pass and scores for the Pioneers because everything is working for them. That was Caden Broadnax, the big body junior from Norwalk, Connecticut. Yeah, I'm not sure where uh, that pass was supposed to be going. Or Morgan O'Reilly was right behind him. But all's fair in love and war. Take a look at Broadnack's first goal yeah, as he just sneaks in there, grabs it. I don't think O'Reilly would have caught it anyway, but took care of business in Sacred Heart up by nine. I'm sure if you ask Jake Garb, he'll say, oh, yeah, I was, I was passing it right to Broadnax. Of course, O'Reilly wasn't even open. Why would I pass it to him? Actually, I, actually, that's exactly what I saw in my head when I made that pass. Correct. As Caden Broadnax puts the Pioneers up by nine. Nine minutes and 30 seconds to play. Pioneers have dominated the dot. See if it continues. He digs it out towards his help. Scooped up, trying to get past midfield. They do. The Pioneers are back on the offensive. Yeah, the only thing the Pioneers have not fixed from some of their ills at the beginning of this year is the man up. But everything else, including the faceoff X, has been working. And honestly, that's more important than scoring with the man advantage. So rain continues to fall on a gloomy day in southern Connecticut. Getting in tight, shoots over the net. Did not miss by much. That just floated over the crossbar. Coming into the game, the Pioneers were shooting at a pretty good 58%. 58% of their shots were making it on net. Today, I'm sure that will increase. They haven't missed too badly too often. This is their highest goal total of the year, by the way. They scored 12 at SBU, so offense is clicking. Pioneers in a wide set, 30 to shoot. Sacred Heart takes one from deep, and it just finds the back of the net. That was number 45, Skyler Wiles. Skyler Wiles. The senior buries his first of the day. Pumping that ball into the back of the net. What a shot that was. Skyler Wild puts the Pioneers up by 10. He took it from way downtown. Didn't even see it. That got there in a millisecond. Just rifled that ball. Pioneers now up by a very comfortable double-digit lead, and I'm sure they're having fun on the offensive side. They're going to keep firing them. If you're struggling like this, 0-7. Might as well score as many as you can. Confidence will help going forward. All MAC games until the end of the regular season. Correct. If you're going to get hot, now's the time to get hot. So nothing John Bosley does not want to see today. Score 20 if you can. VMI trying to end this run. It's been a six-goal run for the Pioneers, their longest of the afternoon. It does look like Basti is uh, very slowly emptying his bench a little bit. Skyler Wild has not seen too much burn. He made it count when he got in. It's just a clinic being put on by the Pioneers' defense. Trying to clear it, and he will. One-man show. Puts it back over the midfield line. You can see the white jerseys getting progressively more wet as they have endured the elements. Pioneers back on the attack. Garb. Oh, another goal for the Pioneers. 
believe that was Morse, Morrissey again. Just a nice little give and go with Jake Garb, who's been all Spooner. over the offense. That's Carson Spooner. But as we mentioned, that is his hat trick. He capitalizes. The Pioneers have now scored 15. Carson Spooner, the attacking senior from California. A couple Seniors. great passes. Spooner to Garb, back to Spooner, back in the net. And Adam Norris has been deflated after a very, very hot start in net. The freshman from Yorktown, New York, has started all nine games. He had a career high of 22 saves against Queens. And we will be right back. The Pioneers looking to end it strong. Evan Cormier, Joe Fortunato, Sacred Heart University. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college, college sports. sports. Welcome back, Evan Cormier and Joe Fortunato in the booth. The Pioneers are now enjoying an 11 goal lead with seven minutes and 51 seconds to play. The goals are coming from all participants of this Pioneer team. As we look across the MAC, we've got a couple interconference games taking place today. Mount St. Mary's travels to Wagner. Cansius travels to Manhattan. Siena to Long Island and Marist to Quinnipiac. Those are all happening this afternoon. Thank you for choosing to join us here at Sacred Heart as the Pioneers are putting on a clinic offensively, defensively at the midfield line and in the faceoff dot. It's working from all angles for these Pioneers. Yeah, not very often if you're the Pioneers that uh, the clock has been your friend this year. A lot of frantic comebacks, so... This is a nice little relaxing seven minutes and 37 seconds. This is the captain, Ryan Stout, stretching the legs. He's going to carry it all the way back to the X. Jake Garb still down there. A couple fresh faces as we see John Murray handling it in the offensive side. Skylar Wilds back down there as well. This is Johnny Morgan. He's been heavily involved. Big part of this game plan for the Pioneers. Johnny Morgan doing it himself. Oof. Almost put that in the back of the net, too. Seems to be raining harder now than it has at any point this afternoon. The skies have opened. Now Jake Ward. Jake Ward's got four goals on the day. Let's see if he can't make it five with 30 to shoot. Dodge attempt. Shut down by the long pole. Jake Ward still trying to get something going. Gives it off to Morgan. Morgan now cutting. Finds the attacking pioneer. Jake Ward in tight. Tries to go behind the back. Gets shut down. Does Fresh the, shot clock after the save. Shot clock, though, yeah. They can kill another minute if they choose. Sacred Heart has not seemed interested in doing that. Jake Ward really wants his fifth. And he pays the price for it. He gets a face full of turf back on his feet, however. Yeah, it looks like a uh, turnover for Sacred Heart here. VMI will get a chance to get something going. The cadets will take on Siena. Towards the, or at least they just played Siena. They won by a score of 14 to 10. They'll take on Mount St. Mary's at home back in Lexington on Wednesday. Looking to turn it around after a long bus ride back home. This is Will Duffy who was at the top. Gives it off the Pioneer defense not letting up. They like the way the scoreboard looks. They don't want it to change before they get out of here. Duffy to Rustrecki, who tries to get over the middle to Hartley Jordan. Oh, 
Whistle sounds. Ten seconds to shoot for the cadets. Five minutes to play. And it is pouring now. It is coming down. Jordan Hartley is going to need to take a shot or they'll surrender the oh. possession. Rings the pipe again. Jordan Hartley has been shooting well this afternoon. He seems to be the only cadet who is able to consistently at least steal some sort of an angle. The skies have really opened up here, if you can't tell. Absolutely. Clock is stopped as they talk it over behind the net. Yeah, they did hit the post, so I'm not sure what they were discussing, but... Fresh 60 for the cadets. Restrecki's trying to do it himself. Gets caught up back there. Big defensive pressure. His stick goes flying. The flag goes up as well. I missed the call by the official. I'm assuming that's going against the Pioneers. There was a hard stick play made behind the net. I believe that's going to be defenseman Jack Ramsey, the sophomore from Bayshore, New York. I believe he picked up a penalty earlier this game as well. Neither team has capitalized on any man-up advantages. 30-second penalty for Sacred Heart. Clock winds, 4.45 to play. Pioneers leading by 11. The full 60 to shoot. VMI fine-tuning their penalty kill. Or penalty power play offensive set. Again, if you're VMI, you're not necessarily thinking you're going to get 11 goals here. As Pazienza sees it through again. Another big save for Pazienza. He's in double digits now. And Sacred Heart going to have to do a little work here to clear this. Just eight seconds to get it over the midfield line. Long pass. We'll make it all the way to Norris. Ooh, that almost tricked Norris. Trying to intercept it in midfield. Ooh. He does. John Murray now on the attack. Yeah, a couple of unfamiliar names out there right now. Good to see them get some time on the field. Murray handling it at home. The midfield freshman at a summit, New Jersey. Takes the screen and rolls with it. A lot of pressure being applied. Murray wants the shot. Save made by Norris. Handling it behind the net is Nikki LeBlanca. Excuse me, that's number 49. I thought that uh, LeBlanca was a goalkeeper. I was, I was going to say, you. Uh, he looks interesting with a smaller stick. <laughs> I was wondering if he, they were letting him uh, play a little offense. This is number 60 now handling it. Will Moulton, the freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. That ball has just not been working for VMI today, really, in any capacity. And give Sacred Heart a lot of credit for that. Their defense really shut this VMI offense down. They were coming in flying pretty high. Sacred Heart stuck to their game plan and really made life difficult, and VMI was never able to break through. Now in tight, it looked like the cadets were going to have a rather uncontested shot opportunity. But the defense from Luke Catalico, the sophomore out of East Cobb, Georgia, was able to shut down that opportunity. Whistle sounds. Seems like it's going to be a timeout. Timeout by John Bosti, probably to talk things over. Bosti wants to make sure that a few of the less experienced players are in the right spot because this is valuable experience as the rain pours. We are going to be right back. Join us for the end from Fairfield. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. Hello and welcome back to Campus Field. As the cadets and the pioneers are bearing the elements, the rain coming down at a very steady pace. I hope they got Molly inside. It is really pouring out there about my walk back to the car. Pioneers up by 11. Two minutes and 43 seconds left to play. 
BMI with the offensive set. They will have 53 seconds to shoot if they elect to use it. Gives it off to Rostrecki. Takes a shot. Save made, but it looks like Another penalty that's going to be hard. number 21, Jack Ramsey, going back to the sin penalty. bin. There are two flags on the field. And as we said, you want to end it strong when you've been playing so well. Although the second one, are they both on Sacred Heart? It looks like it. First one's definitely going to go against Jack Ramsey. Yeah, maybe the second one was on VMI. I saw the official pointing. As Pazienza makes his way to the bench after putting in work in the crease, Pazienza's going to end with 12 saves and a win. Now we get to see Nicky LeBanca. Uh, no, both penalties are on Sacred Heart, it appears. This is the real Nicky LeBlanca who takes up Switched his stick in that. Small stick for a uh, short stick for a long stick. Jack Ramsey with his third penalty in what, the past 15 minutes? Maybe. He's getting his work in. LeBlanca gets to come into the game six on four every goalie's dream yep sacred heart down two men no better time to come in cold as a goalie two minutes 22 seconds left to play from campus field you have a minute and a 30 second penalty on the board here so will duffy gives it off now duffy in the slot misses badly that's not what you want if you're VMI. Help behind the net. VMI will retain possession. This is AJ Stamos by the pylon. Restrecki now trying to set something up in the slot. Gets it in tight. Tried to quick stick that one. Really good play. And this is Jack Carr, the senior defenseman from Shelton. That's what I would have done. Just throw it down. A little lucky there for Sacred Heart. Now the Pioneers. Ooh, big defensive stick check. I don't even think he knew that he knocked it out. He kept playing the body. Trying to outrun him was Barkus. Barkus still handling the ball. Doesn't want to pass it. Barkus got his steps in. A minute 25 to play. Pioneers with 50 seconds on their shot clock. Back at even strength now. This could very well be the last offensive set for the Pioneers. I'm sure they will happily oblige. Skyler Wild handling up top. Nothing doing there. Gives it off. Sets a screen. Rolling over the screen is Cam Brown. Cam Brown elects to take a shot. Bounced over the net. No fresh shot clock for Sacred Heart. So 18 seconds left. 50 seconds left in the game. As the sun sets here in Campus Field. And the rain comes down even harder. 10 seconds to shoot. It's Braden Edwards. Braden oh. Edwards shoots and scores and one gets the flag and celebrates. Braden Edwards is the junior out of South Kingston, Rhode Island. And he puts insult on injury, yeah, 16 for the Pioneers. Isolates around the crease and just slips that right under the crossbar. You can see that water pop off the net. That was a beautiful shot with a very slim angle. Braden Edwards, first goal of the season, I believe. Thirty-seven seconds to play. The Pioneers are riding the high of a twelve goal lead in what will be their first win in conference and first win overall. No better time to get it in the present. Their next game will be Wednesday where they travel to Poughkeepsie. Just a short little drive playing Marist. Marist and Sacred Heart have only played four games. Sacred Heart has been on the losing end of both of the last two. 
They won the first two ever meetings. Last time the two teams played was back in 2013 where they lost by three. Pioneers will enjoy this home victory before they hop on that bus next Wednesday. Trying to make sure they stay at four goals. LeBlanca picks up a nice save. Now handling it, five seconds to play. LeBlanca will retreat, two, one. Horn sounds and the Pioneers get to celebrate their first win of the season. Jake Ward with the hat trick. There were multiple Pioneers that put up a hat trick today. Jake Ward had four. Morgan O'Reilly had three. Carson Spooner had three. Nikki Cassano had a rare goal. Braden Edwards picked up his first of the year. Moreshi got a goal and an assist. And Sal Micchio picked up an assist or two at least. He was in charge of a lot of offense for these Pioneers. As far as VMI goes, Luke Restrucki buried one. Hartley Jordan had two. And Renza had the last goal. As far as the Pioneers go, everything was working offensively, defensively. They were killing penalties, winning faceoffs, dominating the O zone, dominating the D zone, playing physical at midfield, and VMI just could not figure out the Sacred Heart defense. Just a, a type of win that if you can bottle up and sell, you would do it. So Sacred Heart needed a, uh, a little bit of a push as they got their first one on the year coming into the meat of the max schedule, and no better time to get a win like this than right now. With just one month left to play in this regular season lacrosse action, their schedule reads Marist, then LIU going to Wagner, and then home for a three-game streak against Quinnipiac, Mount St. Mary's, and Canisius. As the team shake hands, the Pioneers on the winning end of a blowout here in Fairfield. 16 to four. Jake Ward is now the lone goal leader for the Pioneers. He's got 15 on the season. Again, as a freshman, he was the NEC Player of the Year, 17 goals and nine assists. He now has three hat tricks in his eight games. Sal Micchio did not pick up a goal, had a couple assists. He should still be the point leader. He's a three-year contributor. He had 20 goals in each of his first two seasons with the Pioneers, and he's really been Mr. Consistency. He's still just a junior. Carson Spooner picking up a hat trick. He's been a four-year contributor for this team. Last year he had 16 goals, 13 assists. He's now scored in six, multiple goals in six of the eight games and scored in five straight. Jake Garb controlled a lot of the pace, buried a goal. He's got 12 points. He's scored in five straight now. Johnny Morgan had a goal early. He scored in five of the last six, and VMI is now finally making its way off the field. They elected not to go in for halftime, so they've been in the hail, the rain, bearing, bearing with the brunt of it for most of this afternoon. Stay with us as we wait on Molly Jacob to grab head coach John Bosti to hear about very interesting and important win here at home. It's been a, a chaotic one, but the Pioneers were in control the whole way. She's also going to have a conversation with Jake Ward, the sophomore from Highland Ranch, Colorado, who took over offensively, scoring four goals, his third hat trick of the year. The defense really told a lot of the story for the Pioneers as well as they just took away every angle the cadets could come up with as Molly is dealing with the rain field side. Take it away, Molly. Thank you, Evan. Jake, six games today, 15 total for you on the year. What brought the explosion? Uh, honestly, I think it's the work we've done all week practicing. You know, I think the past two weeks especially, we brought the energy every day in practice, and I think we were just ready to, you know, show it on the field today. 
and that behind the back shot in the first half. Do you practice that? Yeah, all the time in the backyard, during practice, after practice. I mean, yeah, all the time. Awesome. What are you looking forward to in the season? Uh, the next game, Maris, Wednesday night. All right, awesome. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Back to you guys up in the booth. Allowing himself no time to enjoy his victory and four goal performance was the attacking sophomore Jake Ward as the Pioneers get able to go off triumphantly at home. Again, their next game will be at Maris. They'll take on Long Island at home, go to Wagner, and then end on a three-game home streak to end Maction. Before he came to Sacred Heart, Jake Ward was a U.S. lacrosse all-American. He recorded 77 goals and 75 assists in high school, and he led his team to a 5A state championship, three-time all-conference, two-time all-state in Colorado. We get a look at the Pioneers' triumphant walk into the locker room to a big home ovation. We thank all who bared the weather. Again, it was a, a gloomy, miserable day in Fairfield. M Molly is fieldside with head coach John Bosty. Molly, take it away. <laughs> coach, this is your biggest win since 2019. You said that when the ball was going to start going into the net, that good things were going to happen. What did you learn from your team today? I'm going to try not to get emotional because I'm really excited. Um, I think I, I learned that our guys, when, when, they can, when they can just stick with what they do every single day, this is the result, right? And that's a good team. They had a big, they've had some big wins this year. They've gotten better. So this is a big win for our program. It's our first MAC win since... We've now, we're now back in the MAC from when we were in the first time. And, um, you know, we're just, I'm really proud of them. I'm really proud of their effort. I'm really proud of the, the mentality that they've kept through everything this year. Like, everything's, we just keep going forward. That's what we talk about, and that's what they're continuing to do. How do you view your placement in this conference moving forward? You got a big game, Marist, on Wednesday. How are you feeling about that? Um, we're going to just be excited about this right now. Uh, we'll th we've already started thinking about Marist um, as a staff. But listen, it, it's, a, it's a gritty conference, and I, in the past, in the MAC, it's literally gone down to the last weekend, and I see nothing different this year. I mean, everybody's beating everybody. I wouldn't be surprised about seeing some scores today that we were like, oh, wow. Um, but everybody's good. Everybody's tough. And so it's a, it's a really good conference that we're very excited and we're lucky to be a part of. Congratulations on the win, Coach, and good luck on the remainder of your season. Be Evan, back to you. Thank you, Coach, and thank you, Molly, as the Pioneers pick up their first win in the Metro Ath Atlantic Athletic Conference all-important home victory. On a rainy day in Fairfield, the Pioneers were able to bury 16 on the shoulders of a Jake Ward hat trick. Carson Spooner and Morgan O'Reilly had three apiece as well for Joe Fortunato, Molly Jacob, and everybody here at Sacred Heart. Thank you for joining us. I've been Evan Cormier.